until recently, if you follow, if you use uh, the, the various tools and the papers that come from IPI and other places, there was like a, what I like to call a toolbox there. So, and there was a lot of things there. There is entirely various, uh, various storage guides with little wheels will allow you to, to see how oh, this film would last uh, uh, a given number of, uh, of years for the color dye, the same thing. Uh, there is this publication, author by, by Peter, the MSQR, who can uh, compile in a very concise uh, way a lot of information about how to store and how to, to make the, those material live longer and longer. Uh, and then there is a web application like the DuPont calculator, the Reclaimer notebook, and so on and so on. So, but I, I often use myself all those tools. And uh, when you say, OK, wh what kind of tool do I need now? And how they connect to each other? And so uh, there was a feeling of there was a kind of missing link there, something that could consolidate all those data, in a way, and background information and convey in a form that we can, one, learn about film, film because there is a lot of pe people who come into this field and th they don't know. And there is less and less people, actually, that know about film because we tend to move <laughs> to new technology. And, uh, and also uh, how to care about film, but in a very, very practical and uh, methodical way. So this is where we came uh, with this idea. And uh, we thought that it was a good time for this because, yes, there is a long history. Uh, archivists, librarians deal with decay all the time, and they see it. Uh, there have been an uh, immense body of data that have been really developed over several decades of work, not only in the US, but also in the UK and also in Japan, actually, at the beginning. So there is a lot of things, and you have those tools, and. Uh, there was a way to not force, <laughs> but invite people to use it in conjunction. That was, was really the intent. And the most important was here, the last point here, that physical preservation is still something we have to do, no matter all the new tricks that we can do to you know, communicate the information. Uh, we still have to care about those materials. So uh, we focus on film in this particular project. Uh, we focus on education. Actually, it was a grant, education and training, that we got to develop. Uh, we want to have a component that could be a decision-making tool, that like a step-by-step, -step, uh, OK, we hold your hand, but you as a guy will make the work and, <laughs> and make happen and, and really improve the situation of your collection. Everything has to be concise. You don't want to read forever uh, on your computer, computer screen. And uh, so all of this was uh, the kind of requirement uh, that we, we decided to put in it. So uh, again, when you, look, there is, uh, when you look at what to do about film, we come to the conclusion that there is really only three things, the three major things that we need to, to do. We need to know about the material, definitely. We need to really uh, embrace this idea, which is not uh, an idea, it's a fact that storage condition really conditions the life expectancy of the materials, of organic material in general. And when you add all of this, and let's say you have the ideal space for your material, you still have to monitor. And I am not talking only about monitor the condition here. You have to monitor what is happening to the material. It will still decay at a certain rate. But you have to follow that. So uh, the approach is relatively simple, <laughs> right? And uh, it's knowing, storing, and monitoring, as I like to say all the time. And um, this is what I will give you some background and why we came to this uh, thing. So when you, uh, so this is a free application, uh, so everybody can can go there. And many of you uh, actually went to the website, I suppose. Yes or no? Wow. So I, I should uh, sit. 
<laughs> now, right? But I want to give you also some, some, uh, some background and how we decided to do what we did. So the second, the second page, uh, this is a page where you can learn about film. Again, there's a lot of uh, volunteers who go into archive and museum and help. And, and we saw that there's some component there that will be useful to have in this web application that they can learn about. So the first thing is learn about film. This is something that will be expanded. You have a timeline here that you can explore and, and see the key date and so forth and, and, and learn, basically. Uh, film come in various formats, as we know. Even this morning, we saw a lot of different formats on the screen there, from X-ray to roll film, steel, and so forth. So um, that it was important. And more in addition, it was also often a key to uh, identify some of the plastic. When I say knowing the material, is okay, we need some kind of help sometimes to know it's nitrate, it's acetate. And this morning, we, we had this. We can't afford to have an infrared you know, uh, next to the <laughs> Next to, next to the film in the archive and do the analysis and so forth. So, so in this particular tool, uh, which is a combination uh, of, uh, I would say, there's a combination of uh, some information which is in, in the MSQR. There's also a pioneering publication in the early 90s, I don't remember exactly the day, maybe 93, that Andrew Robb and uh, Monique Fisher over there uh, base identification, and they put in a very simple. Was it was it a project uh, in the school when you were at the school? Uh, but that was extremely useful because they distilled the information to the point that you could decide <laughs> uh, most of the time what you have. So this is a little bit an inspection, an inspection of that, and and uh, I want to acknowledge this. So the first thing everybody can say if it's X-ray or. Uh, 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 cut film or motion picture film, so you go there and then you you can, sometimes you can have a date, date range, the, this is the, the chronology will help you. The idea is to narrow, narrow, narrow down. And again here, you don't want necessarily to identify one single uh, object for your preservation project and planning. You need to have an idea about what you have and what kind of potential problem you may have in your museum. So, uh, so you narrow down and then up you have the more like, likely answer. But the, the idea here is to learn about, okay? It's, it's, uh, it's to learn about the process and, and what is happening about the history and so forth. There is some tests like the uh, polar, polarizer uh, tests which are explained and demonstrated. It can be useful to really pinpoint what you, re you, what you really have. So. There's various material, of course, and film material, uh, black and white film, technicolor, chromogenic film. So you can see that when you have a picture like this, okay, you can't cut your film and <laughs> yourself, but it, you learn a lot about those process just by looking at those pictures and looking at how the dye are organized in the emulsion. There is nothing in common between a, a technicolor and a chromogenic. So, so you have some pages here that you can, again, consult and have a lot of examples of material there, um, again, to learn, to learn, and to learn. So all of this, is, it, it's a lot of work that many interns have worked and others <laughs> on this. It's not uh, all us. It's really uh, a collaborative work. Uh, the other thing uh, which is, I think, key as the aid, it's a visual decay guide. So if you look back, and I remember 20 years ago, I was focusing, and when you go to conference uh, like those, on the screen, there was only decaying material, <laughs> horrible things. It was like uh, a lot of decay, and it was doing good pictures. So now, uh, the difference is often, I think we understand better and we know what to do to avoid that it will decay, decay further. But anyhow, you have to identify what is happening. So here we can, uh, can, uh, 
can uh, compile and uh, limit to 16 major type of decay there. And that's covered a lot of ground, of what you see, unfortunately, uh, in the archive. So, uh, so this one, for example, again, this is a, uh, it's a plasticizer, by the way. Uh, Trifenyl phosphate, really, uh, it's a good picture of that, actually. Um, so for each category of decay, you have, this is a, the model we chose, what happened, what caused it, and what to do about it. But at this point, you know what? You can't do much, <laughs> right? But what you can do is to limit further down the road. And what I like to say, to say also is uh, for every damage, and when I talk damage, this is so negative, which is damage, materials. There is hundreds and thousands that are in good shape. And I think uh, our effort are to focus on those, the one who are in good shape. The, the other one, well, unfortunately, they are where they are. Uh, and that is really to be the idea. So we talk about this this morning. But that was uh, certainly a key point. The Arrhenius prediction approach we use and use and abuse maybe. <laughs> but this is where, <laughs> where we, uh, we can uh, uh, put out those tools, those wheels. So in the, in the way of application, of course, because it's much easier, the few data points that you could put in the wheel, they are way expanded. And uh, I will show you uh, how it looks like. The nitrate, again, we, 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 we said a lot of bad things about nitrates this morning. <laughs> Uh, that they decay, that, uh, and so forth and so forth. We also, also say that some are in main condition. And as a matter of fact, this, this graph here that was published uh, show that, uh, well, if you, if you really put them in the cold, those samples, you know, they can go hundreds of years uh, easily. And I think the, the natural aging that they went through it over the decades and decades, are consistent with something like this. So um, yes, we can preserve their, those. We can preserve, of course, the acetate. And uh, there are still people who are skeptical. And uh, <laughs> that, that, uh, that uh, those data, you know, accelerated aging, they are really true. And so uh, there is one experiment would take a lot of time. It was to have some samples where around this point here in terms of acidity level, which is when everything speed up. This is what we call the, the autocatalytic point. So uh, from the third project uh, that Peter was mentioning this morning, we had a, actually I had a lot of, a lot of film that I had there who, who was at this point here. So much of the work is to produce samples. So I kept them around uh, for 20 years. I mean, they are still there, OK? And um, half of them were in a freezer, and the other one were in the chem lab, human comfort, you know, the, the 70, 50, 70, 50 uh, environment. So you can see here, uh, which is significant, uh, that after five years, it's, it's really not long at all, right? After five years, actually, the acidity had doubled, just after five years. And at this point, you can, you can see some, some physical property changes. In the material which was uh, kept in the, in the freezer, after 20 years, you can't measure really any change in terms of acidity, which is the most sensitive. So now I can put, uh, you know, my right hand or my left, I don't know which one, <laughs> that for sure 20 years it will work. And of course it will work more than this. But those were, were really data, who are, you have to be patient, I guess. Uh, <coughs> whoop, and that there is nothing you can say against those data. They are really the truth. So over the year, during this decade, we look at a lot of different things. Uh, um, okay, and you, you, you heard about this. What kind of role enclosure can play? 
who can uh, roll uh, uh, acid scavenger like molecular syrups uh, uh, and so forth, developing uh, di diagnostic tool. Uh, also, thing of being, you know, adding to our uh, our knowledge here, and it came to the point that okay, let's put this into into practice. And it's not it's not necessarily easy to really uh, translate <laughs> all those data into some kind of tool that we can use and and uh, and have an effect. So that was really the challenge. We did a lot of uh, survey by hand and so forth, and tried to really put all this information uh, into uh, into this web application. So, if you are interested in uh, doing this, uh, you can go to the web application, create a free account. This is is free. Uh, first, you will be asked to. Uh, characterize your collection. If you want to characterize the whole collection, it's fine. Uh, 100 little collection, you can. All those data, by the way, that you enter when you are there, they are stored um, and kept on the RIT data center. You, you have a password, of course. It's only you or somebody that you uh, um, give the password to, we can look at them. I can't look at them, <laughs> uh, by the way. And they are back up and so forth uh, in the same way that the, the data on uh, eClaim and Notebook are stored and, and preserved, it's the same thing. So um, there is a step uh, here. Characterize the collection is basically what you have and what kind of environment you have. Uh, assess the condition for certain uh, material like where acetate, you have a tool. So you will have a tool to record your data. Uh, you will be able to predict some of the future there, make some prediction that's been put to use this this color wheel and store acetate storage wheel, but in a in a digitized version. And and then make a plan because that's ultimately uh, that's is what it is. So so basically, okay, you, you will be asked a few questions here. What kind of uh, environment, what kind of material you have. And basically, you build your museum there. And that is under your account, and uh, it's yours. So you have a way to do a really quick preservation overview. A lot of red is not a good thing. <laughs> uh, a lot of green, it's okay. Uh, but Blue, it's even better, right? And nobody will have only <laughs> blue and so forth because this is where we are at. Uh, it's not because the John Kennedy uh, Library decided to have a sub-freezing storage in 1978 that everybody has it or can afford it. So it's just a, it's just a goal. So based on this, you can go a little bit deeper and and pick one of the collection and there on this uh, screen. You have a few recommendations and help you to address every major problem. So, what, what kind of what kind of problem do you can you can have with uh, if you have color material, you will have some recommendation for color dyes. If you have acetate, you will have some recommendation, and and you will have some link here to the other tool uh, of the web that I will show you. One of them is okay. You have color, you can. Uh, basically play a game here and uh, for example okay this is where I am at here where well, this person here is in pretty good shape right he has cold storage but let's say he was there he could have explored uh, okay what if I lower my temperature what if I decrease my humidity and just to get a sense how the thing evolve and how uh, <coughs> Temperature change, uh, it's a really, really powerful tool. If you have acetate, uh, you have this little tool here, who <coughs> basically will create uh, a spreadsheet where you can enter all your readings. If you, if you use any strips, it will also tell you uh, how, many, how many samples should I test in relation to the size of the collection. Uh, based on the default confidence level that we put is 95%, I think. Um, and, and so 
the idea is to, to help, you know, move in, in that direction and basically do something. I mean, also saying this is something we have done, yeah, by hand <laughs> for a long, long time. Uh, the other thing, it can generate uh, some automated report. Uh, so it will generate uh, this type of graph here, which is basically the distribution of the your result here. And so, well, that is pretty good up to here. Here is the autocatalytic point. So here is a concern, right? But in the same report, actually, you have a graph like this that tell you, uh, OK, depending on the condition you have that you enter, uh, here I think it was a pretty good one. Uh, yeah, it was a 40, it's a cold storage, so 40 Fahrenheit. But it will tell you, well, in, uh, in 60 years, actually all those here, in 60 years, actually they will be here in the, in the level two. And because of that, you will have a significant increase. Half of your collection will be in trouble, OK? That is what it, they, they help you to, to tell you. So it's a kind of customized approach. You can enter various, various way into the tool and, uh, and play with it. You can also use this particular uh, tool here, which is the same as for the color, but for acetate. And uh, here there is two, two type of number, right? So you move the temperature, you do some simulation there, and you can see that this one here, the 44 years, is for fresh acetate. So who, who is storing fresh acetate, right? Not to me. It's just an indication of the, of the level of quality of the storage, but it doesn't reflect in any way what you have. So of course, the higher the number is, the better it is. The true number that you have to watch is really this one, is uh, what will happen to those film who are at the autocatalytic point um, if you don't change in what you have. And in, in this particular case here, the five years here, was at 70 Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity, but if you lower the temperature, you can see, oh, I get 62, and oh, even better, 141. So if your goal, if your goal is to really ensure that all your collection <coughs> made it <laughs> for a few hundred years, just to be sure, that is where you have to go. So this, I th that is the tool that you should use when you apply for funding, <laughs> basically. That is a tool that, uh, make a case to really why you need a better storage for your collection. So there is a, a lot of other aspects, uh, of course. The most important is, again, what do I, use, <laughs> what do, I do next once I have this number? And uh, so there is some resources there, again, uh, using a kind of concise uh, format here to step by step uh, go through and organize uh, what you have to do, what you have to consider to, to move forward. Um, and let's say for a minute, <laughs> you have it. <laughs> it's not finished, OK? If you have the, this, this environment that you really wish to have, you still have to monitor what you have. And uh, he has a lot of advantage here, for example, if you if you have the colder you have, for example, the less you will have to recheck your collection. That is kind of makes sense. But the people who, who have a storage who is not suitable, actually, they should they should not be in this room. They should be checking the collection. Okay, no, stay for a minute, but <laughs> but this is really what, what it is. So all of this, it's uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, it's what we think, and, and again, there is only those three words that to, to remember, and I think it, it synthesizes uh, the approach. Now, uh, it has been launched in November. Just, uh, this is just a few numbers it's for me because I'm curious about And so I can see that there's something like 400 people who had a free account and will look into and so forth, and there is apparently 31 really start surveying the collection. So that's, that's making me kind of happy because 
it gives some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of data uh, that they do something with it. So this uh, repartition here uh, is not quantitative, okay? It's just uh, out of the uh, 140 collection there, where there was 60% who had acetate and, and so forth. It's kind of qualitative, but everybody has acetate. <laughs> and everybody has color and so forth. So there is really a, a real need this. So I don't want to say that famous, uh, that famous uh, sentence, you know, I have a dream, <laughs> but I do. Uh, and uh, that is where we are today. You know, when they characterize this collection, you can see that there is more than 50%. They have, you know, a normal environment like we like it, uh, where we work. Uh, but uh, there's still work to do. So, so th the dream, yeah, is to have something we'll go <laughs> and look maybe uh, in that direction. And S Sarah, Sarah will talk about digitization. And, and one of the questions I asked her when we were outside, and what do you do with a microfilm after you know, they're digitized? Well, you know they could last for a long, long time, right? Uh, and probably, but that's is the next talk. So I will stop here. <laughs> I will stop here. And uh, again, thank NEH who found this. A lot of interns work on this. Uh, thank you, Jay, to test the, the site. Also, and many of us did, did that. And uh, like uh, Barbara, friend, Steve Wilson, in Austin and so forth. So thank you. <laughs>